Okay guys, it's Kakalier and it's the weekend, so it's time for us to get back to our high definition Java game to development tutorials. In the last one we just said that we're going to go over sort of just in game with collisions and sort of power bar. So what I did is I did a very quick demo uh, which just shows the collisions and the power bar which I've been having a look at making. Of course in this series of tutorials we'll go through them with you guys and we'll make them again maybe make them a wee bit better than my rough work but anyway here is the rough sort of what it's going to look like so if we just run this program here or these shapes here you'll see a collision so this one here hit it and now it's moving off with less velocity it's moving off with more that's due to their mass and their <coughs> velocity they start with uh, I don't know if anyone does physics but it's a linear relationship is momentum is equal to mass times velocity so we've just done that and then calculated a new one a new velocity for each of them by taking the other one's velocity and mass and sort of dividing it through if that makes sense it will make more sense when we come to do it in the actual game so you got to imagine those two blocks were like sort of horses and guys jousting and now we go into this so this green bar is a power bar as you see it moves up and down which is exactly what we need for a power bar pressing space at any time we stop it and that that is basically it once we stop it that will return a value and from that value we can work out maybe the velocity for this horse here how hard he's going to hit this one but of course the heavier your armor the bigger your mass the bigger your momentum same sort of physics okay so let's get started on the actual tutorials here uh, first things first is the game canvas class now this is an abstract class which I've been using for a while. I started working on it, ma making it better myself. It's, it's similar, well, it's, yeah, it's very, very similar to ones on the last videos. So from this time, we're making it abstract. So uh, you might want to copy this. And uh, you need this as your start. I'm not going to type it all out again because it's a lot of work. I'm just going to take you through it. So. First of all, it's abstract because it's got two methods which we're going to use, which are two abstract methods, update and paint. So whatever extends it can be updated and painted, and that's all you have to do. You just have to change these two functions in your extended one. Let's see if we look at jousting. Don't know where it is. Paint and update. Override those two, and it will paint and update whatever you like. Okay, so back to back to the top. We have few variables that we need. We need the width and the height of the canvas. These should probably be protected. Instead of just int, it's always good to give them a security level. Uh, the period is just so that the timing's okay. 10 seems to work for me. Buffer strategy is so that we can get two buffers. So we've got the screen and the back buffer. That's your double buffering. If you don't know what that is, I suggest you look it up. It's basically you draw the image to the back screen and then you move it to the front screen. And whilst that gets moved to the front, you draw something else to the back and just continually switch them. Okay. Uh, these are for if you want a background. Realize how my background was white, I could have it green, blue, black, whatever. Or if I want a background image, I've got functionality for that as well. <coughs> thread is what's called from the runnable interface. Runnable just means that it starts, a it starts its own thread. If you don't know what that is, I suggest you look that up as well. And then everything sort of runs in sync with this here. Uh, our constructors, I'll just let you kind of copy them down. That's all it's doing is taking a width and a height and basically setting the canvas to it. Ignore repaint, you must set to true or it'll try and repaint the components on it whereas we're actually overwriting methods to paint the components. <coughs> uh, set bounds is just setting the size of the canvas, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't define a colour or a background image, it just sets the background to white, and then it makes it nice and visible. The second one's the same, but this time if you have a background, it sets the background colour to that background, and it sets the background colour to that colour. Wow, that I don't know how many times the background in there. And the third one is just adding an image in, <coughs> which is fair enough. So, where are we? Right. 
So now we've got this. Uh, I hope you've typed them up. You can always pause this video, type them up, and whatever, because I'll probably end up posting the source. But until I get up, you'll need to do this before you go on with the rest of the tutorials, or you won't be able to follow through with me. If if you're not wanting to follow through, that's perfectly acceptable. Anyway, uh, add notify. So this is actually from the original Canvas class. It's a uh, overwrite. So when it's add notify, when you add a component to a frame, so when we add the canvas to the frame, it sends a method that says, "Hey, I've been added to the frame." But it, of course, it doesn't technically say that. But it adds a wee message that says, "I've been added to the frame." which is why we call this super method so it goes all the way back up the classes until it gets to the original add notify and then so once it's been added to the frame we create the double buffering we set it to the double buffering and then requesting focus is just so that we can like take our keyboard and put events in there which is fine and then we just call a start game function start game as you see underneath it starts the thread so it basically starts everything in operation starts everything running and starts this runnable interface here because it's new thread this this being the runnable interface okay run is very simple game loop we take the time we update we render we draw we take the new time away from the beginning time and then that way that's how long it takes to do our loop the sleep time is our period which is 10 minus time taken and then we just put a thread to sleep for 10 seconds so we can do our garbage disposal get rid of all the stuff we don't need that's not important as I say as long as you have all this here then it doesn't matter what it's doing because it will still work render is just you know get, getting the graphics and then rendering anything to the back buffer of course Paint is what you're going to be overriding, as it's down here. So, paint, you draw everything. This stuff here just, uh, what, what, how do you say, uh, clears canvas, which is fine. Draw actually puts the back buffer onto the screen. Again, you don't really know how it does this, as long as you know that it does it. Another two methods just say, does it have a background? kind of set a background and delete a background is all about getting background images we will use them in this game so we do need these three methods apart from that as I mentioned before we have our update and our paint methods which we overwrite so whenever we like overwrite update so say I want you to move something I put mo that move function and update when I get up to here it goes oh right I have to update so whatever I say in the class it extends this it runs this update and then it does all of this sort of stuff in the background so this is a sort of engine as it were and uh, yeah that is us for this episode and I'll s hope to see you in the next one leave comments please